person right now be healed. Today, I'm going to 
have to deviate from that because when the Lord moves, you have to follow. Amen. And uh, what just happened was meant to be. I worry about the program. We deviate. Excuse us. Every so often we allow it to do that. Amen. Amen. And especially. Here in the Gospel of Matthew, and this, this verse comes from part of the Sermon on the Mount, chapter 5, verse 9. It reads as follows. It says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Now, I, I kind of hate to send you out like that, then bring this next one to us. But uh, that's how it came out in my, in my studies. I want you to turn your Bibles to Brook Book of Proverbs, chapter 13, verse 10. There, say amen. amen. I'm reading out of King James, Proverbs 13 10. 13 10. It reads as follows It says, Only by pride cometh contention, but with well advice is wisdom. It said, Pride bringeth contention, strife, insolence. That's what comes before that. So what it's really saying is pride is one of the leaders of conflict. Who did you never say? Who said that? <laughs> Learning how to resolve conflict is a precious jewel to have in your treasure chest. Unresolved conflict causes hurt, harm to the body of Christ, causes division, it hinders prayers, it hinders spiritual growth, it hurts the families. Resolving conflict is very beneficial to the body of Christ. It saves relationships, it promotes fellowship, and it glorifies God. Amen. Today, I will teach a biblical way to resolve conflict. First thing I want to, to identify is that we must be willing, a willingness must be there to resolve conflict. Your mindset must be that of a peacemaker. Therefore, you must take the first move. Look at your neighbor say, to resolve conflict, to resolve conflict you, you must make, must make the, first move. the first move. I know, <laughs> I know some people should. <laughs> because, you know, some of the questions that might come up is, uh, what if it's not my fault? And some of you might say, I didn't do anything wrong. Come on now. It doesn't matter when resolving conflict is focused on fixing what is broken, not who's at fault. Yeah. Resolving conflict attack the issues and not each other. Yes. To resolve conflict, you must be willing to place the concerns of others before your own. So it takes a growing up to do that. Now I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Philippians, chapter 2. And if you're looking for a reason to find fault of what I'm preaching, you're going to have some problems. Because uh, I've been all through the Bible. And if you don't, you don't like it, just take it up with the Lord. It's pretty, it's pretty simple how this is going to be expressed. And I'm going to take a little more time just today into addressing this because is needed. Here in the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verse 4. Matter of fact, let, let's begin in verse 3. It says this, Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own thing, but every man also on the things of others. He goes on to say, Let this mind be in you, which also is in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but yet made himself of no reputation, 
taken upon the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man, and be formed in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Yes. Christ humbled himself. Yes. Let me need someone else to help him. Because the mindset we must have has to be of one who care more about others' issues than yourself. Mm -hmm. And an ideal role model for that would be Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I want you to turn your Bibles to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verse 45. Taking on the mind of a servant will cause you to do things that you would normally do. Here in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verse 45, it reads as follows. It says, Even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life as a ransom for many. Look at your neighbor and say, You've got to be willing to give yourself away. If you do nothing to resolve conflict, it doesn't go away. It festers. It causes division. It hinders your prayers. If you got an attitude, there's something wrong with you, and it's dangerous, look at your next it's dangerous. It's a thing. You didn't do nothing wrong. Uh, that's your view. But when you want to resolve conflict, you try to look through the eyes of the person you have a conflict with. And that's not common for us to do. We usually look for the, the solution through our own eyes. And one of our first fixes for conflict resolution or resolve is don't say nothing. Look at your neighbor and say, that's what you've been doing. That's what you've been doing. Stop. <laughs> it's totally unaffected. And it's some things that prevent us from wanting to address the issue. Sometimes it's fear that the conditions can worsen. But you notice, know, fear is not of God. It it's puts you on an island. When you serve the Lord, God is a God of relationship. It brings you to a city, not an island. We want to be in the city, not an island. We want to be in the city, not an island. Therefore, the mindset of us who wish to resolve conflict has to be as this. It is better to resolve conflict to save a relationship than it is to let conflict dissolve a relationship. Amen. If we all are sons and daughters of the Most High God, we're not willing to give up none. I'm not willing to break no relationship. So we must make a an earnest effort to work and resolve these matters. And I want you to be totally conscious of all these things I'm putting before you, and I'm going to put some verses before you. And I'm going to show you what's the negative part. If you're not doing nothing, what it's going to cost you. Now, if you do nothing, mm. it gets you nothing. I know some time back, and, and if you're up in your 50s or more, Billy Preston used to have a song, Nothing from Nothing Leaves from Nothing. Hello? Uh, if you do nothing, you need to expect nothing. Hello? That, that's, that's, that's pretty much so. That's the principle you can follow. But I want you to look at the negative things that will occur to you if you were to do nothing. Or if you decide to play the weight game, I'm going to wait for you to make the first step first. I want to wait for you to, to do something after all. It was your fault. <laughs> Hello? Did the Lord wait for you? It was your fault. Did the Lord wait for you? No. Was it your fault? Yes. Did he do anything wrong? No. He didn't ask you about all that, did he? If you believe, if you confess, if you move, if you love me, you keep my commandments. He commands you that you love one another. He commands you that you forgive one another as he has forgiven you. 
Now, these are things I want to show you what happens when you refuse to reconcile or to resolve conflict. I want you to open your Bibles to 1 John chapter 4, verse 20. And this is, some people have trouble with this verse today with the next set. Hope it ain't me. <laughs> 1 John 4 and 20, not the gospel, but 1 John 4 and 20, in the back near the book of Revelation. It says, if a man say, 1 John 4 and 20, if a man say, I love God and hate his brother, he is a for he that love not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom have he not seen? Hello? Don't be acting like you all ain't on God and you hate everybody. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, that's what you've been doing. Stop lying. Stop lying. In a nice kind of way. <laughs> we, don't, we don't need you to be lying to yourselves. You can't hate people and love God. They don't go together. The next thing I, I want to show you is that if you do not work at reconciliation, if your heart is not right, it hinders your prayers. Oh, somebody who said that. Turn your Bibles to Psalm 66, 18. Psalm 66, 18. You know, it's amazing. I'm turning to the page that got all these scriptures memorized in my head. But I, I still like reading. Yeah. Amen. It says this. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not hear me. I'm not going to forgive you. I got an issue against you. I'm not talking to you. And oh, by the way, Lord, I need you to bless me here. I don't pray for my healing. Pray for all this. No, I'm telling you, I'm not listening to you. Why? Because you ain't fixed what you're supposed to fix. Don't come to me till you and took care of what you're supposed to take care of. Why? Because I'm not hearing you. So if you don't take care of first base, you can't get to second. Let me see. Man, some of y'all may not be a baseball player. <laughs> If you don't fix what's in the first grade, you can't go to the second grade. Hello? Yeah. So it's very important for you to know if you don't, it can hinder your prayer life. Let me give you some more verses. Because usually, Christ Church is not a one-verse church. Let, it, let us go to the Gospel of John. Chapter 9. Verses 31. We cannot be willing to dissolve relationships with Christians. You want to be a mass murderer and want to reject us? Hey, see you. Keep it moving. But we talking about church people. People who say they love the Lord. And sometimes when I say church people, I might just say church goers. <laughs> Because this is different for being a, a Christian church people than a church goer. Amen. You can go to church Amen. without keeping the commandments of the Lord. Amen. You can go to church and not love. You can go to church and not forgive. Amen. But we're not doing that up in here. Amen. Uh, Amen. Say not up in here. Not up in here. <laughs> here in the Gospel of John, it reads as follows in 9 and 31. It says, Now we know that God here is not sinners, but if a man be a worshiper of God and do his will, him he hear it. Did we get that? Amen. Now, how many people are married? I got something for you. This special right here. <laughs> Brothers, I'm about to put you on glass. Very so often I had to hit the trumpet on the brothers. Hello? Nah. They get hit so much, I usually try to avoid from hitting them. But today, I can't, I can't do that. I want you to turn to 1 Peter chapter 3. 
Verse 7. I told you, if you're not right, it will hinder your prayers. It will cut off your communication. Wouldn't it be a sad thing for you not to be able to communicate to your Lord because you want to be you instead of what He desired you to be? Listen to this. This is for the married people in the house, brothers. It says this. At verse number 7, it says, Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Okay, let me explain that to you. That's good as much. <laughs> if you treat your wife wrong, he ain't listening to you. It'd be a hindrance for your prayer life. So if you're going to be right, or you want the Lord to hear you, and you marry, you need to treat your wife right. Amen. How many people want to treat their wife right? How many people want a wife? Yeah. When you do, yeah. when you get her, you're never going to do that. Okay? She's <laughs> 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 on the way. <laughs> Next thing, it, it affects your fellowship with God. I told you that first John 4 and 20. And the next one is it affect your relationship with man. Remember this, the Ten Commandments, the first four commandments deals with your relationship with God. The next six deal with your relationship with man. Your relationship with God is vertical. Your relationship with man is horizontal. It all comes into alignment. You got that? Open your Bibles again to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5. Let's begin reading in verse 22. 5 and 22, I want to read from 22 to 24. It says, But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Rock or like being an empty head, shall be in danger of the council. Uh, be a, it says, shall be in danger of judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Rock or shall be in danger of of the council, but whosoever shall say, Thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if thy bring a gift to the altar, and there remember it that thy brother hath an ought against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. Second. First. Only two people reading the Bible with me. <laughs> it says, Go thy way, what? First. To be what? Reconcile. To thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Go first. Make the first move. Amen. A peace maker. Mm. Hello? Amen. Are called the what? Children of God. God. Are you a peacemaker? Mm. If you're going to be a peacemaker, it, it has to be more yeah. than words. You know, you got to say, if you walk like a duck, talk like a duck, and quack like a duck, we say a duck. But if you say you're a peacemaker, and there's no peace following you, we might have to say something else about you. Hello? We want to be peacemakers. A peacemaker is a person who seeks after peace. And he puts himself in a position to bring about peace. Amen? Amen? Now, if we don't jump on this immediately, it's going to disrupt our fellowship with God, disrupt our fellowship with man, it's going to hinder our prayer life. But now if we move 
and respond to conflict in a timely manner. Some of us like procrastinate. I mean, it's just part of your makeup. Guess what? That's part of your makeup you should leave off. Makeup is stuff you put on. You don't have to put that on if you don't want to. You choose to put that on. It's, you know what you get when you're procrastinating? Yeah. Little. How many like little? Raise, yeah, raise your hand. You like having less. You like being a, a dollar short a day late. You like finishing second. You know, one day I was out at a store and one of my friends saw a shirt. When I was coming up, I was very competitive. And it said, second place is okay. And on the back it says, for you. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what they told me? You go, Kimber, that shirt reminds me of you. <laughs> I'm never selling for coming up short. Amen. Do you? Amen. Not when I got a God that's almighty. Amen. Not when he give me instructions plans. He give you instructions on how to win. All you have to do is walk it out. Amen. When you're not winning, it's because you're not following the instructions. Amen. You have deviated. You have chosen to answer to your own desires and not that of God. And guess what happens when you do that? You get what you get. And it's less. Amen. So listen to this. If we resolve conflict, I told you, the mindset has to be, it's better to resolve conflict to save a relationship than it is to allow conflict to dissolve a relationship. Oh? Yeah. Does this mean we're going to win everyone? No. But it means if we've been living here, we're going to move into a new district. Remember that old show? We're moving on up. <laughs> to the east side? <laughs> well, I'm not making that the east side. We're moving up. <laughs> No offense to the east side, not west side. I'm on west side. No, okay. <laughs> but we want to move up. And if we want to move up, we got to do the things that move up. Even the, the show Jefferson, he didn't just move up. He did some things in his life that caused him to prosper, and he moved up. Even though it was just a show, but that's what it was based upon. And so we have some things that we can do in life, follow God's word, and it will prosper. Let me show you one of the benefits of doing what the Lord had to do. The Bible says that for man, how many of you guys have enemies? How many of you have enemies? Now some of you want to act like you're so nice, you don't have no enemies. How many of you want to say everybody love them? Raise your hand, I'm really going to put you on the spot. Everybody like you. Everybody want to be with you. You, you special. Everybody has some enemies. If Christ had, he had enemies, you got some. The Bible says, this is the benefit of following God, that if a man way pleases the Lord, even his enemies will be at peace with him. It pays to keep his commandments. This is the benefits of resolving conflict. It restores relationships. It promotes unity. It brings peace. It protects us from the wolf, the big bad devil, and it glorifies the Lord. If you're dealing with some issues and you're not sure where you have all this, <coughs> ask yourself this. Is my behavior glorifying God? Would he be pleased with the way I'm handling this man? Now, if you want to lie to yourself on that one, that's, that's a tough one. You might have to deal with some stuff. But remember this. Conflict exists throughout the world. It shows up in your homes, your jobs, and our churches, and schools, and playgrounds. The list just goes on and on. Most of us have not been taught to resolve conflict. How many of you ever been in church and they preached a message about resolving conflict and went through a step-by-step -step process according to the Bible to resolve? How many of you been in church and seen that? That's sad, isn't it? Look at your neighbor said, you're in the right place. You're in the right place. Goes on to say this here. Those of us who are good at resolving conflict should reach out to others. It's not good enough for you to know something. It's good enough when you share what you know with others. 
because you want them to reap the benefits that you reap. And a person that can resolve conflict, they stand out. Because you know why? They don't usually be around a lot of confusion. Why? Because where they at, since they wait to please God, is peaceful for them. You don't see them arguing back and forth. He's like, you know, you're always well-mannered. Why? That's not just by chance. That's because they follow things. They, they do things that the Bible would tell them to do. And another thing, one thing I want you to know about, about Christ Church members here. Christ Church members. Yes. If you remember Christ Church, raise your hand. Let me yes. right I'm in the right house. And I was like, I might not be after this one. <laughs> one thing I know about Christ Church members, they are willing to do the right thing. It might take some longer than others. Nevertheless, I do not believe there is one person within the fellowship of these saints that will reject resolving conflict. Our Lord, I mean, our love for God and our love for one another will cause us to move Amen. to resolve. Amen. Amen. Some of us might be a little slower than the others. It's nobody. We're going to take note on this. So as we continue to walk in our, our faith, we must do so as peacemakers. Amen. We must do so as servants. The servants put the welfare of others before themselves. Christ is the example. You got to be willing to be a sacrifice for the betterment of others. Remember the song me and McDowell made says, I give myself away so you can use me. You got to be willing to give yourself away. Amen. Don't worry about finding fault. Find the fix. Mm -hmm. The bridge is broke. We need to get to the other side. Well, who broke the bridge? Hey, I don't really don't care at this point. I need to get over to the other side. That bridge being down prevents us from going to the other side. So let's get over to the other side. Let's fix the bridge. Look at your neighbor and say, we all have faults. We all have faults. God's not through with us yet. God's not through with us yet. God's going to say this here. Remember, I told you if your heart right, your heart not right, he's not what? Hearing, hearing. hearing you. But if you do his will, yes. him he hearing. hear it. Husbands. Don't treat your wife wrong and then think you can go to the Lord and get all this stuff you guys. Hello? And don't be doing other people wrong and then, oh Lord, by the way, I'm dying, could you please heal me? Yeah, when you fix that little problem you got over there, when you, when you do right, when you show up, when you quit waiting around, do you want to wait to be blessed? If the Lord is, I'll be the blessing right now. How many need a blessing right now? You want to postpone your blessing. You want to wait the next week or, 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 or maybe next year. You know, yesterday I went to homegrown service to my buddy Steve Miller. He was uh, Wayne County Sheriff. He was the head of security under Benny Napoleon. And he had just got promoted. He hadn't even got to his promotion. He was at home brushing his teeth, collapsed and died. 63 years old, in his shape, doing all kinds of stuff, skydiving on his last birthday. And he dropped and fell dead. And at his service, they gave him the promotion that he was supposed to have. Because he didn't make it. Today, Sister Donna, Dana came to me and told me about Brother Curtis and Sister Paula's son. Brother Curtis was a very dear and loving man and a very close friend of mine. Right? Like a brother. And I was very troubled. It was a very tough time for me to get through that. And when she told me that, I, I began to weep. And then I, I thought about the goodness of Jesus. And I thought about his mercy and how, how he's able to, to do exceedingly abundantly above what we were ever, all can ever ask to think. And my mind said, well, you got to be on track. You got to be right before the Lord. You got to do what's pleasing yes. unto God if you want him to hear you. So I spent some moments in my office praying. I heard you all worshiping out here, you know, praising the Lord. And when I finished, I came out a little late. And I, I apologize for that, but I was caught in that moment. And when I came in here, the atmosphere was that of praise. 
and the garment of praise of the spirit of heaviness. And you seen that move, it set the atmosphere. Yes. That's why I stressed it, because it was meant to be stretched. Yes. And I was dealing with some things that I needed for myself too. Amen. But I know there was others in here yes. that needed it as well. If we want to be, get the most of God, let us at least do right by Him. Amen. And doing right by each other is doing right by Him. That's true. If you love your neighbor as you love yourself, it's doing right by God. Because that's what he commanded us to do. And in closing, because this is not going to be done all in one day, I want you to open your Bibles to the Gospel of Matthew once again. Chapter 6. Verses 14 and 15. Song before I said there's nobody like the Lord. Amen. There's not. There's nobody loved you like him. Hallelujah. There's not. There's no one care for your soul like him. Amen. There's not. No one Amen. like him. No one that will heal you like him. Amen. There's no one that will care for you like him. No one that will protect you like him. There's no one like you, Lord. And if we have a God, there's no one like you. And we should give them some special treatment. Amen. Hello? Amen. You know, people you love a lot, you treat them a little better than others, right? <laughs> I'm just, you know, keeping it real. Right? <laughs> you do, right? Amen. If you love the Lord, keep his commandments. Amen. Guess what? He don't want us having gaps in our relationships. And the part of the reason why we have those gaps is because many of us, we survey, haven't been taught the proper way to do it. Sometimes we think the way we were doing it was the problem, but it's not. Amen. The Lord tells us we got to take on the mind of a servant, be willing to put other, others' concern above our own. Amen. And and here in Matthew 6, and I'm going to close with this because this is about the time. Verse 14, it says, For if we forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And in the, in the spirit of, of reconciliation and conflict resolute, uh, resolve, there must be forgiveness. There must be love. There must be kindness. There must be mercy. We're looking to fix, not to find fault. Amen. We're willing to restore, not tear down. We're willing, we want to promote relationships and love that God may be glorified. Amen? Amen. God bless you. every Sunday to come before you to see if there's anyone who, who wants to have a relationship with the Lord. There may be some in the house today who don't know Jesus. They haven't received him in their heart. They've heard about him and maybe have talked about him, but they haven't received him. Time is now. I pray that the Lord would draw someone here. There is someone here like that. And he would draw them forth. So if you want to receive the Lord today as your Savior, please come now. Please come now. If there's any in here who want their sins forgiven, want to receive life eternal, want to be whole, feel free to come now. Another thing, so just support for you as a believer to have a church home, a place of fellowship, a place where people know you, they love you, they care for you, they nurture you. The doors of the church are open, Christ Church. If you desire to come to fellowship, to, to join a church that you know is going to care for yourself, I ask that you to come. Praise the Lord. Is there any others?
desire to make Christ church their church home. Yes, take your time. Maybe one year want to come for salvation. You don't want to rush to this part. Doors for church are open. You want to come to the Lord for salvation? Come.
that she walked in purpose with the power of God. And whatever her hands touched, she prosperous. I pray that her life is holy, holy, holy unto you. I pray that her joy is strengthened and renewed. I pray that her strength is renewed, that the joy bells ring. I pray that the peace of God fill her up and pass all of her understanding. I pray that she is filled and made rich right now in your mercies. I ask in the name of Jesus. And I ask that this anointing that's going to be on her touch other lives, touch her family. Yes, and I ask that you will make today different from any other day. That today is the beginning of a new journey, a new walk. Yes, a fulfillment. Yes, it's been predestined, ordained of the Lord. Give her eyes to see, ears to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying, a heart to receive your truth. Let her life never be the same. Let every need be met. I ask in the name of Jesus. The church says, Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Sister Cole in the house. Oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Everywhere he go, in the name of Jesus, let it be well for him. Let his ways please you. Let prosperity be with him. Let his soul be rich. Let kindness be upon him. Let your tender love care and nurture you in his life. From this day forth forevermore, I ask in the name of Jesus. I ask in the name of Jesus. I pray for the events right now. For a double portion. For the man. And they will hear that they will receive the word that you put in them. I ask them to be strong and rich and fight. That God be glorified. I ask in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The church says, Amen. Amen. Oh, look what the Lord has done. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. 